I've always been gay, right? I was born gay. I I knew ever since I was little. I was making out with girls. It was crazy, right? My mom caught me making out with a friend and uh, sent me to a psychiatrist to see if I was gay. Isn't that crazy? Uh, she told me this later. I don't remember it. Um, and I, I was like, are you serious? What was the test? And she was like, well, he asked you to draw a picture of your family. And I was like, wouldn't I just draw my family? That's dumb. But even back then I was making out with girls and um, I did have like a, a boyfriend when I was in first grade. He was in sixth grade. That was just kissing. There was no, no other stuff going on there. That was about it for boyfriends. Uh, <laughs> in junior high, there was this girl that I was friends with and she came out. This is the early 90s, so... Um, it was pretty rough and she ended up getting jumped and beat up. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, I'm not gay. Who's... Not me. <laughs> I'm not gay. So, I went in the closet. And I even became, for lack of a better term, homophobic because I was so scared that people were going to find out I was gay. Oh, it's, you know, that's crazy, right? But it's true. You know, high school, still homophobic. I think that I even got questioned by a couple of people that were like, are you sure? But at 18, it was 1997, the... Ellen DeGeneres puppy episode comes out and I remember being in the back room of my parents house watching this episode in secret and being like whoa this is probably around four months or so before I came out and I watched the movie Boys on the Side uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Drew Barrymore and uh, Mary Louise Parker <laughs> amazing I won't spoil it in case, but I will say that that movie changed my life and made me realize that uh, that it's okay to be gay. So um, that's how that's how Boys on the Side changed my life for sure. But then um, I ended up dating my first girlfriend, who was my one of my best friends. We were hanging out all the time together. Um, she was a couple years older than me. After that, I was a serial monogamist, for sure. And uh, that was until three, a little over three years ago. I was married at the time to a woman and we were, had been together for about six and a half years at that point. And we discussed the fact that we probably needed to open our marriage because she thought it was open the whole time. Know what I mean? But hey, no judgments because I cheated on every single person I'd ever been with, except for my ex-wife, because I didn't know myself. And honestly, in this culture, we tend to just jump from one relationship to the other. And uh, it's okay as long as we're quiet about it. I don't know. Uh, I'm not saying everything. I'm not making, I'm not generalizing for anybody. This is just my experience, right? And an observation I've made. I was dating other people before the marriage ended. We were in the middle of a divorce. The wife did not like that. At my, the partner that I most recently just uh, broke up with, who was my primary, and uh, we did the co-topping together. That person had had more experience in having an open relationship. So I was relying a bit on them for some guidance there. Uh, but as an independent thinker, I obviously was researching and trying to understand because I couldn't understand anything other than doing what I wanted to do for me. 
and figuring out how that was okay, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't think that I'm polyamorous necessarily. I am open to that, meaning if, if uh, I end up having more than one caring, loving relationship with, that's fine. But I'm not necessarily poly, I'm more non-monogamous, if that makes sense. Uh, and I don't want to ever be monogamous. Like I can't, even if I am only sleeping with one person, I don't want it labeled that. You can ask anybody who um, I have dated um, if, you know, how they feel. And um, they would, I'm sure they would say the same thing. I mean, <laughs> with the open relationship that I had with uh, the most recent ex and that now that I wasn't in a monogamous situation anymore is really experiment with um, with my own sexuality because I had learned my body I had already had that time of sexual exploration but since I was a serial monogamous I just went from like one person to the next and I didn't really have that experience of dating and uh, being able to like feel different personalities I mean that to me is what makes non-monogamy so great because it's not personal N nobody can do that thing you wh whatever you give to that person is is your thing you know and therefore you don't have to make them be somebody they're not because if they're not giving you something you can get that from somebody else lots of communication though that's for sure I just wanted to be more in the community I had been very uh, very isolated in my marriage so you know going out dancing uh, it was fun like I, I enjoy doing that don't you guys miss dancing <sighs> like oh I miss it so much so as I got into the community there was I discovered more and more things and that is there's not a lot of really safe sexual environments and then you go deeper into it and then we talk about and how we have been raised in the past and how we are bred to give pleasure and not to enjoy our own pleasure and not to seek our pleasure but to seek how to please others. I, I've already done the other things that I've wanted to do and now I just want to give. I, I became a stone top which for those of you that are stone butch whichever you prefer uh, and that is, uh, my partners don't touch me sexually in the sense of my genitals. It's not, I wasn't always like that. I, I just, through time and understanding my body and allowing myself to actually be like, do I like this or not? Uh, trying different things because, you know, you, you just don't know. So now I want to help other people have a safe space to do that. And if I can help them do that, that's awesome. <laughs> I've just been kind of on a mission since then to figure out how I can do this for more people because I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I don't need to have sex with everybody to do this. I can, I can have conversations that can help people. Um, I've even thought about doing a uh, talk for cis men on how to please women women like sex and it feels like a lot of people don't think they do if it's good they'll like it so do you want it to be good do you want it to be better do you want to enjoy your sex life more I can probably help with that I haven't been able to help every single person obviously but um, if I don't I definitely have uh, people that I know therapists and other surrogates be able to service you so uh yeah you know let me get let me know i want to create an environment where there's more confident and connected lovers so much emphasis put on love in relationships and defining what that means is a million different things in fact your partner might think love is a totally different thing than you do that's not necessarily needed for a connection and i want to show people that even in a casual situation you can feel that connection so if you can feel that kind of connection in a casual situation do not settle for anything less than that in a non-casual situation 
because screw that you deserve the best because you've worked hard to find out what you want and need and you can tell your partner that and if they're not open to that then forget it move on because you you have every freaking right to be happy it's all about the pleasure i would just like to be more of an influencer in general more of a representation of butch women and how uh not only like Leslie Feinberg has even discussed in uh, Stone Butch Blues, but th that battle between uh, the word, the terminology and the identifying with the term butch versus trans uh, and what that means. Because sometimes people feel as though that's what it's supposed to be or there's some sort of interesting historical reference there. Um, I'm dating, but also I'm providing uh service topping uh, surrogate work uh i ideally want to empower you the language uh of of pleasure expand that in your life in whatever relationship and in whatever way you want uh to yourself and then to your lovers if you're i mean why not why not get the ultimate uh, pleasure out of a situation. Safety stuff, or how I go about this, I ask a bunch of qu different questions, but uh, safety during COVID as well is a big, big thing right now. Basically, it's up to you to, what, what kind of priorities do I have? You know, like for me, I am opened up to, to uh, meeting with people uh, and even hooking up and, you know, dates and all that. I feel safe and confident in my um, understanding of COVID, take precautions to make sure that I am safe and that this house is safe. It's important to make sure that you're just in your comfort zone about COVID. It's still a scary thing, you know, and so that's understandable. And if you're not feeling comfortable, then you shouldn't do it because if you if you're not comfortable, then a sexual experience you're gonna it's gonna be in the back of your head the whole time, you know. Uh, and be safe. Be, be, like, ask questions and talk to the person. Get a read on them. If they're being shady, like, there's something up there. What sign, because I'm super into astrology, what sign is it that seeks your services out the most? Shout out to my fire signs out there. <laughs> um, but uh, in order, uh, I would say Aries and then Sag. Um... Leo's, you know, you guys are a little more heartfelt, so you're, you, you still seek it out, but it's a different kind of flavor. Uh, sexuality and gender and whatnot. This is probably actually the biggest question I get. So as a service top, what do I do? Like, do I, what are my boundaries for what I do in terms of service? Um, and the answer to that is I have identified for a long time as a lesbian, so I am attracted to women. I am and have been open to uh, non-binary experiences. If you're a cis male, no, thank you. Uh, need everything to be a case-by-case -case basis because how can I sit here and say to all of you, like, please be open and like explore And if I wasn't? Like, do, what about people who are, are gay for a day? <laughs> or bisexual or any of that doesn't bother me at all i don't care who you're having sex with i'm gonna ask you questions i i don't care it's such a wide range there so there's this old the old dykes out there i'm one of those so okay but uh i have taken a step forward to try to make sure that i continue to learn and i'm open-minded uh and i know i'm gonna fuck up so <laughs> Uh, I'm open to being corrected and learning because things are changing so quickly. And back in the day, we, had, we were really strong into labels because it helped us to identify. And we got a little, a little edgy with bisexual people back in the day because it was the whole pick a side kind of situation. That's, that's tough because you can't, I mean, how do you decide that? <laughs> How, how could you possibly feel like you're part of either community, you know? 
Um, that's got to be really, you know, each each section of our initial community is uh, has their own struggles within that initial. I'm looking for mostly women, but I am in for non-binary. If you if you're looking for what I'm offering, great. Let's have a discussion about it. I still have questions for you, um, and if we're compatible, awesome. I want to talk about a couple of things that people have asked me if I help with couples. Um, yes, in fact, um, I also do hands on, hands off. So it could just be um, that I'm there with you verbalizing, um, or it could be that I'm performing for you or for your partner so that they can see some different aspects of things. Services that I provide in general are uh, <laughs> pleasure work but meaning um, not just what usually gets associated with that, but um, like spa, spa style. I do have a massage table. Uh, I have a big tub in the house and I like to spoil people. Um, love to do date stuff. Like sometimes people will just ask me um, like escort style. Uh, that's kind of fun. Think what else? Uh, just drive somewhere or you want a companion for something, uh, I, I can do pretty much all that stuff. My sexuality, and I did identify as a lesbian, and now I would just say queer because I don't, lesbian is like my overarching identi identifier, but I don't want to be excluded from the experiences with people um, who don't necessarily identify as the gender of a woman. By the way, how this works is basically, you know, you can DM me and we can talk more about it, but um, I am a matchmaker in a lots of different ways. So what I mean by that is DM me. Say, hey, <laughs> uh, I'd like to have sex with you. Or, hey, <laughs> I would like to know how to fuck my partner better. Or... How do you get a better shot in basketball? I don't know. Like, I, my point is that um, I want to give information to whatever pleases you. And if I can help, I want to do that. And so ask me. Because, again, I might not be able to help you, but I chances are I'll know somebody who can. Thank you all for coming and joining. Uh, and I appreciate you all being here. Uh, stay tuned for next week. I'm going to do the, the video on uh, Butch 101. That's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, cheers, everybody.